heart for God. When you find somebody that has a heart for God, amen. amen. He, he said, brother, he said, apostle, I, I didn't know I was a pastor, but I, <laughs> I accept it if you say it. <laughs> but I, I had to tell him you have a pastor's heart for people. Yeah. Amen. And so God calls you to be a pastor and evangelist. And so with that, we welcome you and your very first message of many to come. And I'll say, bless the man who brings the word of the Lord. House of the Lord. Amen. Um, just want to thank the leadership for allowing me to come up here and give a word from the Lord. Um, I'd like to start out with a testimony, a little bit about me. My wife, she wants to give her testimony if that's okay with the leadership. Yeah. Okay. You can come on up and stand. In fact, she's just going to stand with me. Because she's got a part in this message too. Amen. Amen. So, uh, last time we did this, it didn't go too good. Because <laughs> we were in a religious church. Yeah. They, didn't, uh, they didn't accept it too well, so. I'm sorry. There's a, lot, there's a lot of deception in the world. There's a lot of deception in the churches these days, so. Yeah. So, uh, it's an honor. I love this church. There's a lot of um, talented people in here. Very talented people. Yes. And I love each and every one of you. We love you too. Thank you. Um, I'll just start out with myself. Um, I was raised in an abusive home, um, full of rage, anger. Um, I didn't get discipline like normal kids get. Uh, I got it with the fist. Wow. Wow. So, um, as I was growing up through the years, it caused a lot of anger and rage and hatred. And um, I actually thought it uh, was making me tough. In a way it did, but in my heart it didn't. Because it made me someone that I wasn't created to be. Yes. Amen. So, um, as the years went on, I rebelled and rebelled because of the way I was uh, raised. And um, so as I got older and older, I started to use drugs, sell drugs, um, fornicate, and all that stuff God hates. <laughs> so, um, I got older and older, so I got in trouble with the law, so I get probation. I get in trouble again, get probation, finally I get jail time, and then it leads into prison. So I've been to prison three times, in and out, since 2000 to 2011. 2011 was the last time I went to prison. That, that, was, that was 12 years ago. So I've been out of prison 12 years. But I did get locked up one time between then. <laughs> It was a family thing. You know how the family disputes go. But anyway, um, it was simple. Well, I thought it was simple. It seemed simple. It was just, I, it was just a misdemeanor, right? So I just bonded out. That was like five, six years ago. So, so, so right after that, um, I came to Christ. I gave my life to the Lord, and, and uh, we're gonna get into that a little bit. But um, I gave my life to. Christ. And so I get this letter in the mail. Here come the enemy. If it's, it's a letter from the uh, from the district attorney, the DA's office. Okay, they want to jack the charges up to seven felonies. Seven felonies. It went from misdemeanor to seven felonies because of my background. You know what I'm saying? You know how that goes. They, they look at your background and, you, and you, yeah, they don't like it. But what they didn't know, I was a changed man. Honestly. But, um, but yeah, seven felonies, that was five, six years ago. I ain't heard nothing out of it yet. Wow. Nothing. And uh, I'm staying on God's word, and I am um, expecting a miracle out of it. Yeah. I am facing 30 years. You've had it, you've had it three. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm facing 30 years over, over seven felonies. But 
my faith is in the Lord. And I also had a dream. He showed me in this dream that I was going to go to trial. <laughs> and I was going to stand before the judge. And he was going to dismiss him. Wow. Wow. So I'm standing there. Yeah. I'm trusting the Lord. Yes. Yes. I'm trusting yes. the Lord. Yes. My faith is in the Lord. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I have forgave everyone. When I when I gave my Christ life, that was the first thing I did. I forgave all my family members. I forgave all those who trespassed against me, because the Bible says so. Right? Right. right. So you must forgive those who trespass against you in order yeah. for your Father, which is in heaven, to forgive you of your trespasses. Amen. So I did, and I encourage each and every one of you today. You may have unforgiveness on your heart, and I just encourage you to let it go. I think she she wanted to give her um, own I testament. I think she just backed up. <laughs> She's gonna get some of it. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Um. Thank you, guys. Uh, this is my first time actually sharing a truth. You know, I've always kind of said a little bit, but not enough. And it's just like the Holy Spirit's just like, get this out, and then you move forward. You know. And he's also wanting me to work on um, showing gratitude towards the people that actually helped me in my life that I overlooked or blamed that were, you know, that it wasn't them, it was me, you know, and taking responsibility for stuff. So um, what I wanted to share was uh, in Hebrew, the word testimony in Hebrew is uh, I do, so I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um which means to do it again with the same power and authority. Every time we speak out or read a testimony, we are saying, Lord, do it again with the same power and authority. Wow, that's powerful. So, and if it gets lengthy, I'm sorry. I really tried to condense it, and then finally it was just like, you're just trying too hard. <laughs> so it'll show my uh, vulnerability. There we go. Um, okay, so... Uh, I'm skipping over the background story. We, me and Jeremy have the same background, broken homes, abuse, sexual abuse uh, in the family, all kind of that. Uh, and if you've ever seen like any shows, like if you don't know what drug addiction looks like, uh, real raw drug addiction, it's um, kind of like that intervention show, if you don't know. Uh, but it's real. It's playing out in real life, you know, real time. Um, and it gets ugly it gets dark it's but the the point of this testimony when we get done and I pray let me actually pray first um, thank you Holy Spirit for bringing that to my rem remembrance that it is you that is speaking through us you are the comforter you are our helper and Jesus Christ gave us this testimony because he helped us overcome and through him we overcame and, Lord, we just, we thank you and we honor you for letting us be in this house giving this word today. Um, and, 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 Lord, we apologize for not wanting to, to do it uh, sooner and just holding on to this like it's pride or whatever we've had. And um, we don't want that. And um, we just thank you, Lord, for doing everything you've done. And we just pray that through you they will see that this can be done heroin addiction, needle addiction, um, you know, all of these things that you can be healed from, from ch childhood trauma, even sexual abuse, um, physical abuse from, from your mother and your father, foster care abuse, um, and prostitution, and let us not be ashamed um, and to tell the truth, and, and I know that there is someone out there that could, that, that needs to hear this, even if they're not here today. You know, this is getting this out. So, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I met Jeremy in 2011. We were both from broken homes. I had to type this out because I didn't want to skip around. Uh, we were both from broken homes and had more similarity abuse stories than we ever realized. Uh, we saw this later after being saved. Uh, we continue to sell drugs together and seek employment and try to follow the rules of our parole and probation. He did follow, I couldn't. And I was in and out of county jail for the next three years. 
I was, I also put myself into several detox centers and tried rehab over the course of 10 years, several times. I was uh, addicted to heroin. Uh, I was an IV user for over 10 years. Um, I didn't start that way. I started when I was 12. Um, so I was, I was born, my mom used heroin in the womb. And so I was born with withdrawals. My other brothers and sisters were too. And so I was the youngest, but um, we were removed from the home, put into foster care, and then, um, you know, more abuse took place, and then an auntie got us. And she, um, she's one of the ones the Holy Spirit wants me to give uh, thanks to, gratitude to, because the Lord actually placed her in my life, even though when I was younger, I really treated her bad. You know, I did. And she is still alive, 85 years old today. Or is she 80? She's about 80, isn't she? <laughs> She's a nurse, a registered nurse. And the Lord has shown me my parents passed away with their addictions, you know, prematurely. My sisters, my brothers, one disowned me, and one is uh, in, in prison. He's been there all his life. Um, but my Aunt Judy has never, she has always been there. And I just recently, we just started talking, and she's actually been able to uh, navigate me through some of the generational curse stuff because she doesn't necessarily understand it all but she kind of does and she gives me medical insight and stuff yes. so um okay so having said that then um so the course of tw from 12 to the time I met him I had graduated up to uh, severe drug use and um I lost my kids to other family members and they were in places where they don't, didn't need to be. They needed to be with me. And I wasn't the one. Who, I, I wasn't the type that, and, and I'm not uh, downing anybody that does just leave their kids. Because I did abandon them uh, for drugs. And I'm just going to take responsibility for that. But in my heart, I mean, in my heart, I know that's not a good thing to say. But in my mind, I just couldn't do it. It was this, this demon that followed me from generation. Wow. You know, yes. my mom did the same thing. Yes. I did the same wow. thing. And I'm starting to watch, and but I'll get to that in a minute about my own daughter, but because um, the Lord's got her. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so I put myself into several detox centers and tried rehab over the course of ten years, several times, and it never lasted. Rehab never worked. I was not saved. I was not anything. I had gone to church a couple times when I was a kid, and that was that was the just about my, you know, life with I didn't know Jesus, and. Um, so when I met Jeremy, I tried rehab. I was on probation and got caught. So I, they would put, let me go to halfway houses in Atlanta are really bad y'all. Wow. When I was there and this was on more than one occasion, the owners of these places get women out of jail and then pimp them out. Um, wow. which a lot of those women have prostitution in their background anyway, has wow. children and it followed. I mean, even I did. Wow. Okay. Um, I would run away from home because the my mom's boyfriend was hitting on me and you know so then I would have to go sleep with people to find a place to stay and this was in my teenage years so a lot of these girls exact same story um so these places are <laughs> doing this and so so they're pimp you out for your weekly fee of four hundred dollars for rent sometimes more women trying to stay sober and get kids back some of them are faced with this and it's corrupt they get paid by the state to run these places. And not only are these women prostitution, but many are dealing with drug, dealing drugs right out of the facility. So they don't have to prostitute. You know, uh, one girl said she sleeps with the director to keep her spot. And these, um, and these are women that I've talked to just over a year ago. So this is not 10 years. This is recently since I've been uh, delivered and stuff. Uh, it's awful. And back at the trap house where we lived, okay, this is back at the trap house, I would get out of jail and go back to the house where we were selling drugs out of. Um, you know, problems for me and Jeremy. Um, I don't, to this day, I don't know how we survived it, but I know God's got us together now. Because <laughs> um, we had enemies. I mean, we had people didn't want to see us make it. And um, let's see. About that time, we, we began to get waist deep in the drug selling business. The cartel, which was Satan, you know, 
this was right before we got saved too that this got deeper and um the, the cartel tried to make us feel safe and what we didn't know is they they operated in witchcraft in santeria and they they used that to get people to uh, just how they people to get to do them to do what they want to keep them employed it's demonic uh which we all know that <laughs> there is so much detail um i'm not sharing because you can kind of see what kind of life we have lived a life of sin and fear, and we're blind and couldn't see. Yes. We were on our way to jail and even worse, hell for eternity. Yes. God had purpose for our life, and yes. he was about to show us. Jesus. But now, but not how we expected. And you guys, in 2014, I went to prison. Um, it was my first encounter with the Lord wow. since I forgave my dad in when I was 17. Um, I, was, I was in prison... And, Okay, and so then I want to read um, these scriptures about angels because I had several encounters with them. I mean, and I'm not giving glory to the angels. They're servants just like to help us serve Jesus better. But um, I do believe that angels um, come before someone comes to know Christ, especially to those who have been abused, experiencing trauma, fear, suffering. The Lord loves us so much that he created servants, messengers from heaven to help us, even people. Um, to prepare us to see Jesus and help us. I know this because I encountered angels several, t- several times since I've been saved, then once um, when I was delivered and once in jail. Okay, so the Bible says, Hebrews 1.14, uh, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? And then Psalm 91 says, For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you, in all your ways, in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And so um, I was attending a church service in prison in 2014, and a group of evangelists, they were allowed to come in and minister to us And uh, on Mother's Day. And I gave my life to the Lord. They, they came up, and what they did was they gave testimony about being ex-drug dealers and all the stuff we were. And so that really shocked me. I never heard that before. You know, and I didn't know Jesus. I, I, I didn't know that that's what he did. I, I mean, I had no clue. I was just that Jesus was a fictional character in the Bible, wow. you know, wow. as, as far as I knew. Wow. But, I, but I always knew that what was happening to me when I was a kid was not God. Wow. You know, I don't, it might have had something to do with, you know, my aunt and my dad. And my dad got saved, you know, after he did all that stuff. And just, I'm sure it had a lot to do with that. But um, I know there are some people that don't understand but so um, so I got saved. They were explaining what the blood of Jesus does, and then um, the ne- about fifteen of us. And then the next weekend, they came back, and a lady came up to the front of the prison church service, and she said, um, "Does anybody want to get a baptism in the Holy Spirit?" And I was like, I just felt the the nudge to get up and go forward, and I did, and. So she prayed, she prayed, and I just started praying in tongues and got hit, and I was, it was in front of, like, a whole prison. Wow. Wow. And um, then I went home three months later, and I didn't know why, but I was immediately witnessing. Like, I'm, I'm telling people about hell, and I, wow. I, I, had, I had no, <laughs> I had no, no idea why I'm talking like this, and I'm in wow. at the house telling all his friends and all our friends and like, they're trying to steal drugs and I'm like hey did you know that <laughs> I mean I'm just going on and on and on and, and I didn't know that ironically it was um, I wasn't going to be able to stand because I hadn't had deliverance yet I wasn't going to be able to stand um, but you know God's never late his plan is unfolding and so I I ended up using drugs again because, you know, the pe- people, places, things. So I, I'm starting to use heroin again, and some girl comes over, and she gives me a shot of GHB, and it and it took me out. It Like, when I talk about the part where the angels catch you, you won't dash your foot on a stone. Yeah. Well, when I when I went to hit the floor, the, the concrete, I did, and an angel caught me. And wow. he looked at me, and he said, uh, ma'am, you don't look so good. And then, and he was behind a bright light, wow. and he helped me to the ground. I know that he did. And then, the girl, she left me for dead. She she um, took off and jumped in a car, and 
So his parents, they rushed me to the emergency room and I'm unresponsive. They cannot get me to, they telling him and his mom, you know, she's not coming back. She's gone, you know. And um, I saw another angel and he was standing by my bedside and he told me, uh, you're going to be okay, Sarah, you're going to be okay. And that's kind of all I remember. And then it was bright. I just remember the bright light in the angel's face. And then I woke up and they were trying to get me to go home. The doctors were trying to talk to me and ask me what I did. And anyway, I couldn't speak for like three or four days. And uh, so we left. And then, um, but all that time, you know, uh, we began to talk about, uh, we got married right after that. And then we began to talk about going to church and getting out of the drug game, like stopping it and uh, so the Holy Spirit was just moving and God was trying to talk to us and tell us, hey, it's time, it's, it's time. And it, and it was working. <laughs> and so we, um, we got rid of all the drugs. We got rid of all the, all the money. You know, we, we started just spending it on everything and all the people in our lives got really mad. I mean, they, they were coming against us, wanting to turn us in so they could come into our house and steal our money. I mean, family even. Huh? Born again. Yes. Okay. All right. So, so we, so we went to this church, and um, I went up to the altar. We went up to the altar. We repented and gave our life to the Lord. We got baptized, and this, this normally don't happen when you're baptized when you receive a baptism in the Holy Spirit. It normally comes later. Right. Yeah. A lot of times, but it can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I received. So I got baptized, and I received a baptism in the Holy Spirit. Wow. Does anybody know the difference between yes. water and blood? Yeah. Being baptized in the Spirit. Okay. Right. So so when you're baptized and you're baptized into Christ, the old the old you is dead to to the world. Your sins are washed away and you're baptized into Christ, right? So you receive a well of water, right? So when you receive a baptism in the Holy Spirit, it is um it's it's to um to uh, minister, uh, to do the works of Jesus, heal the sick, cleanse lepers, cast out devils, yeah. raise the dead. In Matthew um, 7, 8, it speaks of in Matthew 1, Matthew 10, 1, he gave his disciples authority and all that stuff. Yes. So we are disciples of Christ, right? Yes. So we have authority, right? Yes. Amen. 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 So, so when you receive a baptism and the Holy Spirit, you receive power. Yes. And then when you Come receive on. power, yes. You have authority That's yes. right. over yes. sickness, demons, yes. death. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just curious. Is there anyone in here that has not yet received a baptism in the Holy Spirit? Has anyone uh, never prayed in tongues? So we all feel with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we all pray in tongues, right? Amen. 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 When, 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 when. You? You yeah. never you never see the baptism in the Holy Spirit? Okay, we'll we'll get to that at the end of the sermon if it's if it's okay with y'all. Because I'm very anointed in that area. I'm not boasting. The Bible says if you if you're gonna boast, boast in the Lord. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we see a lot of people filled with the Holy Spirit when we go out and evangelize. So Anyway, let me get back on track. So when I got, so when I got, so when I got born again, right, and I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, yeah. I didn't know what I had at first. Right. So, but I know the Lord was speaking to me. He said, He said, um, so when I got out of the baptism and I and, and the baptism pool, when I went home, as soon as I walked in, in my house, it was it was different. Wow. A lot of the veil was wow. taken off of my eyes, wow. Wow. and I seen the world for what it was, seeing for what it was. So I got the biggest bag I could find, and I put all the paraphernalia, anything, porn, anything. Did Jesus did not approve of? It. If Jesus don't approve of, it, you better get rid of. It. That's right. That's right. So I got rid of it, and I operate this big grinder that makes molds. So I, I took it to work and I threw it to the ground. <laughs> and then he spoke to me and said, "Say everything you got, because everything I have, I will drug money." Oh, no. <laughs> All right. He said, sell everything you got and follow him. Wow. I said, I sold it all. Wow. I sold everything I bought with drug money. 
So we started, so we, so I didn't know what I had, the power I had, you know what I'm saying? When I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And um, I, I started hearing preachers preach on it and stuff, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I might as well get details since I'm going there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, now this is, this is powerful, y'all. Yeah. So, so I, I had sex with transmitted disease from sleeping around and all that. Fornicate and good stuff. So what happens when you fornicate? So y'all singles, y'all. You better, you better wait until you got the right one. So, um, yeah, so I'm like, Lord, I got this power. So, I mean, so I started laying hands on myself. I started praying. I started commanding them of, of sex to transmit. I had two incurable oh, sex wow. transmitted disease. We both did. So I started commanding them things to like, go in the name of Jesus. So, um, uh, one, two day went by, nothing happened. Like, All right, but you don't give up there. You better keep, keep faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him, right? So, uh, man, I might not even get in the sermon. It might be the sermon. Right? <laughs> so, uh, so, 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 uh, so I don't give up faith. I, I know what the Bible says. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Yes, come on. So, so I, I stand on this word. Plus, he said, anything you ask for bullshit shall be given. Yes. Yes. Right? So I'm asking, Lord, heal me. I'm commanding these sex yes. with, um, yeah. disease yeah. out of me, yes. away from me. I'll go. So um, I prayed again. Second time, four or five days went by. Nothing happened. So I prayed again. The third time, I came home from work. It was about the seventh day then. So I got into the shower. And I started again to the shower, and, and I just looked down, and all of these um, um, herpes and, and, and um, wow. gentle warts, yeah. wow. they were dried up. Wow. They don't, I mean, it's never, I mean, I've had these things for years and years wow. and years, and they've been there, they just get bigger. Wow. So, wow. so I, these things dried up. It didn't, look like a, it didn't look like some debris or something. So I just brushed them off. And, then, and, and I just brushed them off. It was gone. I would clean. You see my hands? Wow. That's how clean I am. That's how clean I am. He washed me. He cleansed me. He, he, just, he, he healed me. He healed me. And, and the next, I don't know when it was, but I didn't even think nothing about her. The next day, thank the Lord. So he healed me, God healed her, right? I didn't even pray for her. The next night, it may be the next night, the next night, she woke up out of her sleep. She said she was on fire. From her waist down, she was on fire. Five o'clock in the morning. So I knew immediately what it was. We just got to heal. Had it checked out. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't have to because my physical, I could see it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, but, but yeah. So, so we were healed. And then that's what inspired me to go out and start um, evangelizing. And, um, see, see, I still didn't know the ropes. I still didn't know how to approach people and how to pray exactly. You know what I'm saying? So we were, God put this evangelist in front of us. He's been an evangelist for 40 years. He's, he's very educated. Uh, and um, he's got some good healing nuggets. Wow. Yes. That's actually what I was going to preach on as a miracle evangelism. Yes. Yes. But God gave me another word, so we're going to give it to It's not very long, so it won't take long. Yes. But um, so, so we started going in, out into the streets, and he started showing us how to approach people yes. the correct way without offending people yes. in their sins. Yes. Amen. Yes. So you run them through the law. That, see, the law, it, 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 it don't condemn us. It just shows us that we are needed in need of a savior. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It shows us it, it's like looking in the mirror. Wow. And you run yourself down the laws. Uh, have you ever lied? Have you ever stolen anything? Have you ever committed adultery? Have you ever took the Lord's name in vain? Yeah. Yes. These these are the questions I ask people, yes. you know what I'm saying? Yes. I'm like, you consider yourself a good person. And be like, yeah, everybody considers yourself a good person, but you yes. don't go to heaven by being a good person. <laughs> that's no. true. You know? That's the truth. So um so then I and then I ask them, I'll be like, well, um, for instance, you ever, you, ever, you, ever, you ever lied? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever stole anything? Yeah. Or they might say no. If they say no, then 
I don't know if I can trust you now. You just told me you were alive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No way, I mean, I was just told when I was young. Uh, well, okay. Yeah. Right. So, how about, have you ever uh, looked after a woman or a man after lust? Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people do that. Yeah. And it still tries to attack me to this day. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the importance of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. So, power. Yeah. Power. Yeah. And uh, that way, have you ever took the Lord's name in vain? Yeah, a lot of people have. Yeah. Honestly. So, um, not so so you just confessed to me that you're a lying, thieving, blasphem, uh, uh, fornicating, blasphemer. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and then it hits them then, but like, yeah. I'm about like, well, does that concern you? But like, yeah, so, well, so if you died in your physical state right now, you go before the Lord, and he's going to find you guilty or innocent. Wow. And it hits them. You can just like see it. Poof. Yeah. And I'm like, man, yes. I'm like, does that concern you? Right. Then you got them. Yes. <laughs> That's just one tactic. Yes. But anyway, wow. but a lot of another ways are, are like if you pray for someone and they and they get healed, it, it just chills their heart. Yeah. And the gospel, then they open for the gospel. Yes. Then so you got them. Right. You know what I'm saying? They get all years in. Where you go to church? That's the first question they ask. Where you go to church? <laughs> Uh, for real, and then we'll, and we didn't really have a church, you know what I'm saying? Because all these churches they didn't accept us. We were like, we were outcasts, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Something different. They, they, we'll get into that. But anyway, um, so um, yeah, and uh, but that's awesome to to see how God can use you, and He will use you. Yeah. But anyway, that's just. A little bit of tech. We won't go into it. We just we just give God's word because because that's. I'm sorry if we hijacked this. <laughs> no, no, it's good. No, it's good. See, it going. See, this, this is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yes. It don't ever go the way you expect or plan. Yes. <laughs> that's the Lord. Yeah. But yeah, so um, so we started seeing all of these miracles and stuff. But I'm not boasting. Honestly, I'm not boasting. But so we, we all feel with the Holy Spirit. We can all do the same thing. I'm just trying to encourage y'all yes. yes. to do it. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yes. Pray for boldness. If you don't have that, that's what the Holy Spirit does. It your boldness yes. 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 to proclaim the gospel. Yes. That's right. So, so, yeah, we just started doing all this street ministry and, we, and going out and we're seeing a lot of miracles. But I'm just going to give two for, for because they are awesome miracles. But we've seen many. Yeah. One was we've seen this cross dresser. At this homeless shelter that we ministered to, and uh, uh, we were called over there, and he he said he wanted to be free, and I was like, he, "You sure he wants to be free? If he wants to be free, he gonna get free." Yes. So, um, so we go over there, and he was dressed up. As a oh yeah, he, he full, yeah, cross dresser, homosexual, girl clothing, makeup, and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, so I go into the little room, boom, I go in there, and I start ministering to him, you know what I'm saying, and just talking to him normal, casually. And then she comes in, and, and we double team and me. <laughs> team. So, so, so we started ministering to him. We giving him scriptures and, and this and that. We're doing our best not to, con you know, what I'm saying we don't we don't condemn anyone. We just yeah. use, we 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 like to use the law because that's what it does. You know what I'm saying? It don't condemn you, but it shows you you're lot you you know what I'm saying. It's like if you look in the mirror, you see that. You, you are dirty, you know what yes. I'm saying? You need yes. to change, you need to do yes. something about it. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's what the law does. Jesus come to fulfill the law. That's yes. right. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so we just minister to him um, the best way we can. <laughs> but it's kind of, it was awkward, awkward. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, uh, we, get, we got him to repent. The man repented. And we started praying for him, and these demons started coming out. This is like one of the first deliverances, because we just we just recently started seeing deliverance. Yeah, wow. you know what I'm saying. But so, but he started getting delivered. He started getting free. He started hacking up and and, and coughing and all that good, like you see here. <laughs> it's a real thing. Yes. So so um, he got delivered, and then we prayed for him. Yes. And when we prayed for him. It, it, let him in prayer and, and lay your hands on. He received a baptism in the Holy Spirit. Wow. He started praying in tongues. Wow. And, I, and, and that was about six weeks ago, so wow. we, we still mm -hmm. um, uh, disciple him. We're still um, text back and forth and stuff. So he's actually still doing good six weeks. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. After all of that, 
he started coming out of his clothes. Wow. And she started taking his bra, his earrings. She went out, though, and he started taking off his little thingies. And, uh, he, put, he, he put his jeans back on and, and his normal wow. shirt. And I said, now go wash your face. I said, go wash your face. You got her wash car? He went in the bathroom, he washed his face. And the man's been straight since then. He's been his word. He's actually... That's the power of deliverance. When you get delivered, you're free. And I encourage you to know when you when you do, if you if when you do get delivered, keep your deliverance because it's important. You know what I'm saying? You gotta stay in your word. Stay in your word. Pray. Fast and pray. If you have whatever you gotta do, resist the devil. He shall flee. It's hard. I, I, I get attacked every day. We all do. I mean, we're all going to, it's just what we go through. But anyway, that's just one of the miracles. But anyway, seeing a guy's leg grow out one time. Like, yeah, wow. my leg shorter than that. He walked like this. And we prayed for him, and his leg grew out one inch. Wow. But anyway, that's just, but we all, we can all do that. I'm just trying to encourage y'all. If, yes. if, you, if you haven't been out there doing it, if you, just, if you got the baptism in the Holy Spirit and you receive and you receive a baptism in the Holy Spirit, you got power. Yes. Start praying for people. Yes. Yes. Start praying for them. Yes. Actually, you ain't got to pray for people outside the church because um, um, sinners get healed easier than a Christian. Wow. You just proclaim their healing. You know wow. what I'm saying? They get healed. Wow. But when you're in the church, it's different. James 14 says, if there are any among you sick, call upon the elders. I know it's in the throne and pray the prayer of faith, and they shall be healed. Confess your sins to one another. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So so church people is a little different. You know what I'm saying? If they were, who much is given, much is required. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah. So you, you, you might have to confess some faults. You might have to forgive some people. Yes. And be anointed with oil. Pray the prayer of faith, and they shall be healed. Yes. That's God's word. Yeah. So, anyway. But anyway, that that's what I was going to preach on, um, a miracle of evangelism. But at the last minute, um, Sunday night, I got this word. I guess you can. I guess you can. can so if she just stays here, is that fine? Yes. Because she, she, might, she might do a little bit. She might say something. Anyway. I can't read my handwriting. So, uh, <laughs> um, while we at it, I ain't got much of an education the way I was raised and all that. And we're now in prison. I only got a sixth grade education. Wow. But, hey, look. Yeah. God can use me. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, I, I mean, anyway, I just thank the Lord, man, how he's How's he brought how he's brought me out of the darkness out of the darkness into his marvelous light, man. This is awesome. And and and, and some people just just lose their testimony, man. It's just I, I hate it. I hate to see people just lose their testimony. Yes. Unless they come back to repentance. When you come back to repentance, then you then you just add it to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm gonna say that. Wow. Yeah. But anyway. We ain't gonna harp on nobody, no churches or anything like that. <laughs> We were in need of a savior at one time too. Yeah. And anyway, he uh, he gave me this word, and um, I'm just going. Um, it's called the title of the message is uh, "Deception in the Body of Christ." Wow. And what he gave me, that what I, that's that what he told me. That's how he said. <laughs> that's how he gave me. So I had to do the rest. So it ain't much, but anyway, it is just maybe somebody else has heard that word this year. Maybe. It's for someone uh, you may know, or or, or maybe y'all need to study it or something. Yeah, I, don't yeah, yeah. I don't know. But I know there's a lot of deception in the world in the churches, yes. and it's crazy yes. how a lot of people um, worship another Jesus. Yes. Wow. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We worship the right Jesus up in here. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. You're in the right place. Yes. Because if you, I, I wouldn't be here. Yes. yes. I'm telling you right now, I, we, we've served many churches. But anyway, 
we go, we go, we're gonna go ahead and open up for the word if y'all just stand for the word. It's gonna be very simple, quick and simple. I'll open up with the word and then we're gonna pray. Anyway, we'll go home and eat some chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Fried chicken, yeah. <laughs> Amen. 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 Um, okay. All right. I'm going to open up in uh, Genesis. We're going to go all the way back to the beginning. Yes. Genesis 3. I'm going to read 1 through 5. And um, I think this is the NLT. So we're just going to read the NLT. Is that all right with y'all? Yeah, yeah. That's cool. All right. All right. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals that Lord God had made. One day, he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the tree in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that, was, that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Mm. Wow. Lord, I thank you for this word that you've given me. Lord, I just ask it go forth. I don't want I don't, I just whoever it may be for. I know it's not for this church because there's no deception in this church that I know of. But um, I just ask you for this word to go forth and and just ask you to um, use me, anoint my tongue, speak through me, Lord. Somebody may need to hear something. I don't know. But use me, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. And I ask you to let them not see me, but see you. See the Christ in me. And I thank you, Lord, for that. Just use me, Lord. Anoint my tongue. And let this word go forth. Give me the gift of teaching. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. All right. So, uh, since the beginning of time, Satan has deceived mankind. And mankind has deceived mankind all throughout the Bible, right? We see stories after stories how um, people deceive other people and all that. So, I mean, this is this is nothing new. But it, but it is going to get worse. It's going to get worse. So, um, so man deceiving man all throughout the Bible, and um, uh, deception. I know a lot of people may watch YouTube. Be careful if you're on YouTube and you're watching these uh, preachers and uh, uh, prophets and all them. Yes. yes. Be careful. Be have discernment. Yes. yes. I'm telling you the truth. Yep. I know from experience. Yes. So, wow. I'm just going to say that. Yes. All right? <laughs> I'm telling the truth. Yes. All right? and just be mindful when you're on YouTube. It's okay. There's a lot of people on there that have, obviously, Derek Prince is number one. He's a good one. Yes. Uh, um, there's a few others, but, um, yeah, just don't trust a lot of them. Discern. Just use yes. it because yes. he's giving it to yes. us. Use discern. Yes. I'm just going to say that. And so, I mean, it's this uh, deception after deception throughout the body of Christ and the churches. And we've seen it firsthand. We've been to church, to church, to church, and um, we've seen it. And um, God showed us. He showed us and he, he, he removed us from all these churches. And he placed us in this church. And one thing we forgot to say, um, how we found this church, is we were evangelizing. Oh, really? <laughs> and someone said, oh, you sound like these people I know. Really? I said, yeah. Really? Wow. I said, yeah. Who? Where? What? <laughs> so it's like, I don't know. I just met this somebody. Uh, it may have been one of you guys or something at, at a store or a barbecue place or something. And he said that he said something to him and said, You have a spirit of lust over you. He said, if you want to be free, I encourage you to come to wow. church and change or whatever. And I said, Yeah. Wow. I said, and so so we, we, 
That was over a year ago, so we were we were looking for a church then. We were supposed to came here over a year ago. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So Isolate. yeah, we just kept isolating <laughs> and and staying away from all the <laughs> deception. <laughs> <laughs> We can't go nowhere without that deception. <laughs> Good night. That's real. That's real. <laughs> Sick of it. So. But yeah, the Lord placed us here. And uh, we, we we pulled this place up and, and we looked at it and we came here. And she actually got some uh, deliverance from some from some stuff from the religious churches and stuff. Yeah. And she actually got healed too of thyroid issues. So she did. She had thyroid issues. And we went to um we went she went back and got a blood test done. She done gave the testimony, I believe. So some of y'all may have heard it. But she went back and she gave um had a blood work and we got a letter in the mail that says your your lab results are normal. Wow. You took that medication in the test. But yeah, we see a lot of deception, and, it, and, and it's very important to use discernment these days. Yes. But um, yeah, times are evil. I mean, uh, Satan, he's he's crafty and cunning. You have to watch him. But um, every time you pass blame on anyone, you give authority yes. to the enemy. Wow. That's good. Giving Satan too much credit gives him authority. Mm. That's a word. Wow. <laughs> that was that was a word given to me last week. Yeah. <laughs> you give the enemy too much credit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> 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 you too much credit. Yeah, I got authority over him. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, so, so a lot of times we get discouraged and we start to, you know, what I'm saying we can start to lose our faith, but just don't. Don't stay in the world. That's why it's important to read your word every day. Yes. Every day. You gotta get the word in because it's the sword of the spirit. That's how we fight That's right. our battles. That's right. Amen. Amen. But um yeah, deception cannot happen until there is an awareness of the truth. So so when the um so when you're aware of the truth, that's when the enemy wow. comes with his tactics. Wow. County ways yes. tries to deceive you. Yes. He will yes. if you let him. Yes. But yeah, so, so yeah, it's uh, it, if you don't know the truth, then the Satan don't care. He don't care. Wow. He already got you. You know what I'm saying? He already got you. He don't care. But but when you're introduced to the truth, that when he tries to come in, yes. deception. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was just one of the points. Uh, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it the issues of life. Yes. Guard your ear gates, your eye gates, what you watch, what you listen to. Yes. It's important. It's important. I ain't saying you can't watch nothing. Just be, be mindful of what you watch. Yes. <laughs> I just put myself in um, Jesus' position. Would, would Jesus say this? Yes. Would Jesus do it? Would Jesus watch this? Yes. That's really good. Would Jesus smoke this? <laughs> the hippie Jesus might. The other Jesus might. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the other Jesus might. Jesus we serve will not. And we will not. And that was one of my biggest issues. I, I, I gave up marijuana. Methamphetamines, all that good stuff. But my, my drug of choice was marijuana. I'm gonna read. Uh, I'm gonna read another verse that he showed me. Um, Matthew 24, 4. There's a lot of um, scriptures on deception throughout the Bible. Like I say, all throughout the Bible, there's deception everywhere. So Matthew 24, 4, I'm going to read 4 through um, 15, I believe. Jesus told them, this, this, is, this is, they were on the Mount of Olives. Jesus was his disciples, and they were asking him, when shall we know when the end will come? And Jesus told them, don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name. 
claiming, I am the Messiah, they will deceive many. Wow. And there's a lot of Messiahs over the history that have arisen and yes. claimed sure. to be the Messiah. Yes. For, I, mean, I didn't get into all that, but they are some. But, um, uh, and you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nations will go to war against nations, the kingdom against kingdoms. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But all this is only the first of the birth pains, which more to come, with more to come. Then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. How many of you are going to lay your life down for the Lord Jesus Christ? If the time, if the time that's going to be hard. Huh? Yeah. It, I mean, it really is. I mean, you're going to be laying there. They're going to, the, on this chopping block, you're looking at this blade, and they're going to lay it down. Denounce your faith. Wow. Mm. I refuse. You better not. No, that's right. Wow. Um, yeah. So, um, you will be hated all over the world because. You are my followers, and many will return, turn away from me, and betray and hate each other. Wow. Uh, that's happening. We're seeing that, yes. and many false prophets will appear and will deceive many. Yes. Going back to YouTube, there's a lot of false prophets on there. Yes. Yes. Sin will be rampant everywhere, yes. and the love of many will grow cold. Wow. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Wow. Thank you, Lord. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it, and then the end will come. The day is coming when you will see what Daniel, the prophet, spoke about in this sacrilegious object that causes desecration. desecration. Standing in the holy place. All right, let's read, let's read 20, 24 and 25, and I'll move on. Um... 23 and 24, I believe. Yeah. Then if anyone tells you, look, here's the Messiah, or there he is, don't believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen wow. ones, or the elect, other versions say. Um, and that's uh, happening now. See, I have warned you about this ahead of time. Okay, so um, so in Revelations sixteen twelve, it talks about Euphrates River drying up, false Messiah coming out of uh, Israel, performing. He just said it, performing many signs and wonders. And I don't know if it's true or not. Maybe deception. I don't. I don't know, but. The Bible says so. It's going to happen, whether it's, whether it's a lie and it's deception or whatever. But anyway, the Bible says the Euphrates River will dry up. And then it will be, it says, in fact, I'll just read it. Y'all want to read it? Yes. I'm going to show y'all. Y'all know if you're reading the Bible, you know. Yes. Revelation 16, 12. Let's see. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great Euphrates River. And it dried up so that the kings from the east could march their armies through the west without hindrance. And I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs leap from the mouth of the dragon and the beast and the false prophet. They are demonic spirits who work miracles and go out to all the rulers of the world to gather them for battle against the Lord on the great judgment day of the God Almighty. But anyway, that's happening supposedly. They're ready for you. They're afraid he's rude. But we ain't got nothing to worry about, right? We don't. I'm just saying. Um, maybe you know someone that does have something to worry about. I encourage you to encourage them to get right with the Lord. If not, encourage them to endure to the end when the tribulation does come. And we ain't going to be around for it. Amen. Amen. Right. We're going home. I know that's right. <laughs> we going home. He going to let his children um, go through that. I mean, I can prove it. That's a whole other sermon. I can prove all that. I can be. Anyway, y'all know this. 
Oh, I mean, he gave me this work. You want, you want? Are we about good? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah good. You need to run through it real quick. Yeah, run through it. Go ahead. Okay. So some examples of deception. Let's see. As Paul told the Corinthians about another Jesus, this is going on today. Sadly, in the body of Christ, many are being deceived. Deception in the church, example, uh, another Jesus, the one the world talks about, that says yeah. he loves everyone the way they are, even in their sin, yeah. and does not judge yeah. or convict, yeah. and his mi um, minds his own business, right. and yeah. wants you rich, healthy, and self-seeking. Yes, right. Live your best life now. Wow. Um, Wow. That's, okay. that's it. Wow. That's, that's it. That's it. Um, <laughs> um, so there's also churches. There's also churches. Okay, I mean, there's... Uh, <laughs> there's churches, and we've been in some of them, that are free... Freemasons, Illuminati owning churches, and um, they're teaching Eastern mysticism, Gnosticism in replace of the Holy Scripture, but pretending like they're teaching the Holy Scriptures. Uh, and people are not hearing the Spirit, deaf and blind to this. This is deception. Saying things like how to make a good man better. Uh, works based foundation of salvation yes, yes. is what they preach. Um, deceived, they're deceived, and they will say on Judgment Day, Lord, Lord. Example number three, uh, new age deception, angel yes. cards, palm readings, yes. healing crystals being yes. allowed, you know, nobody can, exactly. nobody telling anybody that this is wrong or yes. right. they're just yes. oblivious, uh, yes. healing crystals, and now they got these star magic healers, wow. uh, and yeah, they, they call themselves spiritual gangsters, and wow. if you call yourself a spiritual gangster and you're not one of these, but don't. Don't use that term loosely because there are people that are doing it and they and they're in the church. Wow. They, they go there into these meetings and then they go to the church and wow. so it's wow. deception. Uh, wow. And they believe that it's okay with Jesus or it is Jesus. Wow. Uh, wow. Kundalini spirit, you know, Second Corinthians. Yeah, that's another that's the scripture that talks about another spirit, another Jesus and yes. another yes. spirit, right? Yes. So we've actually witnessed oh, yeah. the Kundalini spirit. Yeah. Wow. We've seen it. We've seen it firsthand. Wow. It's crazy. And they didn't say the anything. Holy, it ain't the Holy Spirit. Right. You know the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He, yes. he don't get on the ground and bark like a dog and a cat and jump right. on the podium. And, you know all that crazy stuff. The people think of the Holy Ghost. And yes. When we speak against it, they can call us blasphemy. Like, yeah. You blasphemy in the Holy Ghost. Man. Yes. I know better. All right, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I stayed in bed for 12 days thinking, Lord, did... Are we black? No. Did we? We, we got that right. We heard that right. Yes. Yeah. And we seen a lot of crazy stuff that we 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 didn't know if, if yeah it started to confuse us for a while for real. We started to get confused. Yeah. We, we actually sat down and and I, I know isolation ain't good, but we had to isolate ourselves for a little while and get in deep the in the word because we want we had to get our the roots word. deep in the word. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so. Um, Let's see, Kundalini Spirit, in the Bible, let's see, but the scriptures talk about all in the New Testament and maybe in the Old, I haven't found that yet. These are only some of the examples we were shown and unknowingly involved in before we came to Church Unchained. God so graciously brought us away from deception. Colossians 2.8, the NLT version, uh, and it says, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding yes, nonsense yes. that came from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world yes. rather than from Christ. Come on. That's uh, like law of attraction, new age books yeah. and authors. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. How to avoid deception is use discernment. The Bible says to test every spirit and whether it's from God That's or not. Right. Yeah. That's right. And these... Uh, uh, also, one more thing: the things the deceptive uh, that are deceptive, the enemy will try to tell someone because I've heard it myself is that they have plenty of time to get right with God. Um, when the Scripture says, "Be ready, for we do not know the hour our Lord Jesus will return," and so don't be deceived. And um, let's see, and seek the Lord with the truth of His Word. 
pray. Just always talk to him. He's your father. I know y'all know this. <laughs> Stuff I'm writing down for me. <laughs> uh, let's see. Time is short. He told me that in a dream. I woke up and I heard that. Time is short. And uh, the day of salvation is today, not tomorrow. And in the dream, I was actually uh, trying to talk to my brother that's in prison and he was walking away from me. And so I was yeah. running after him going, hey, hey, you know. Wow. Uh, and distractions that the Lord uh, showed us. That the, and right now in the body of Christ, the enemy is using distractions to distract you uh, on finances. He, yes. I got a whole story about that. But yeah. We were told not to. We, we, were, we gave him, we got a word that, and I don't know if y'all know it was for us, but we gave, uh, you know, the Lord had been putting it in my spirit to start cooking at home. And uh, I have been praying, God, show me how to be a better wife. Yeah. I'm just not. I'm just not. Apostle said, I, I've hey, never. If you want a house, had it. You, you stop eating out so much. Or every night and cook you at home start, every night. And I was like, that's cooking. for me. That's, so that so works for started, me. She went into the marketplace, and out of nowhere, this real estate agent comes out. Wow. And she, yeah, she was about cutting. A house? Wow. Oh, oh, it looked like it was straight from the Lord. Because wow. I said, yes, we've been praying about a house for two years, you know? And uh, she was like, okay, here, we can get you approved. And yeah, and I ain't just... had no proof of income, you know what I'm saying? Because I was on 1099 as whatever. I was cheating my taxes. Wow. I ain't there. I straightened all that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being honest. We didn't know we were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm being honest. I straightened all that out. Yeah. Amen. yeah. And anyway. Um, that's it. That's, so that's he tried to distract us because we were going to fix him to get into a loan thinking, oh, well, he said two years, but maybe he means get a loan. for two. Anyway, right. it was a distraction. He was, it was an attack. Yes. And we were, we were on, um, instead of looking into the word that you, when we were told to come up here by the Lord in January, in January, we were distracted looking for this house yes. and, and, and we were going to get into a contract on one. Wow. wow. You know what I'm saying? No. Sixteen hundred dollars a month, you know, and we're so then we're thinking eight percent and all that business. I'm like, Lord, is this really? Yes, yes. Because he would have to work overtime, I'd have to go back to work, and it's just like, wait, this isn't what the Lord told us we're supposed to be doing in this season, you know. (laughs) So that was deception too. (laughs) That's it. That's what he gave me. Deception in the body of Christ. Yes. So I encourage each and every one of you to use discernment. Stay in your word. Don't get distracted. And. And pray in your heavenly language yes. that everyone has. Mm-hmm. When the apostles and prophets get up here and they start casting them devils out, I want to see everybody <laughs> in a seat. I want to see everybody praying in tongues.